Linus Tech Tips coverage of Computex 2013 is powered by Western Digital. Our trusted gaming gear partner is Corsair Vengeance, and our trusted retail partner is NCIX.com. So it's time to check out some ASUS systems. We're going to be starting with a couple of tablets that are very closely related. So these are MemoPad 302 series tablets, both of them. And the key difference is, okay, this one's got LTE, okay. This one is a Wi-Fi only model. This one's got eight hours of battery life. This one has 10 hours of battery life. And this threw me for a bit of a loop because I wasn't expecting an Android-based tablet to have an Intel processor inside it. So it's an Atom Z2560 processor running at 1.6 gigahertz that enables ASUS to achieve the battery life that they have on this. And it's not because of skimping on other components. They're both using full 1920 by 1200 resolution displays, which I personally love. I like having the extra vertical even when I'm using it in a horizontal configuration. And with a 10 hour battery life, you're now getting all day computing out of it. Now this is something that ASUS spent a lot of time on with this tablet and I personally love it. I actually preferred the original transformer, the 101, to almost anything that came after it with the exception of the Nexus 7. And the reason for that is because I personally prefer a textured finish on the back. So if I could get you to check this out, they have brought back the golf ball textured experience to the back. Now, the great thing about a metal backing is it looks fantastic in pictures, which is fine and good, but at the end of the day, you're going to bring the thing home. You're going to stain it with your fingerprints, it's going to get warm to the touch, and what a plastic backing does is it is more comfortable to hold. You can easily hold it with one hand and not worry about accidentally dropping the thing. I think I'm making people nervous shaking the tablet around like this, but awesome. Love to see the innovation. It's also going to be in a number of different colors. So this is a black one. I think this is the first time we've seen a black backed tablet from ASUS, at least in my territory. So it might not be the first time here, but it's going to come in a number of different colors, including white, black, as well as sort of a pinky, peachy color. I was wrong. Okay. So I'm still happy because it looks like black and I personally love black tablets, but apparently it is actually a very dark blue, so my bad. And I also should have mentioned before that both of the tablets have two gigs of RAM built in, which means you're going to be able to get a much more satisfying multitasking experience. Now my big problem with low-cost tablets in the past has always been that you kind of look at the thing and you go, okay, I guess it's kind of built okay and uh, you know, it's fast enough, I could probably use this just for some basic functionality. But the problem is that the screen is always terrible, just absolutely terrible. So this is where the MemoPad HD7 comes in from ASUS. This is a relatively low cost tablet. And when I saw, okay, so I'll reveal the price later. But it uses a low cost Qualcomm CPU. It's got one gig of RAM. It runs Android Jelly Bean, 16 gigs onboard memory, 16 gigs of web storage. It's got the usual expansion. So you've got a micro SD slot here on the left side. It's quite slim. I mean, not super slim. It's kind of about like a Nexus 7. Up on the top, this is neat. You've got USB on the go support. So you can plug in whatever it is you need to do via USB. But this is the kicker. It has a 1280 by 800 IPS display, which means you get that viewing angle and that content consumption enjoyment that you just can't get from a cheap TN panel. And all of that is coming in at a price that's below $150 from a brand that you can actually trust as opposed to one that you've never heard the name of before. You have no idea if you can get warranty support. The game's pretty much changed now because there's going to be no reason to buy a low-end tablet from anyone other than ASUS. Now the first time we saw this concept was at CES with the Transformer AIO, which was a Windows-based all-in-one, but when you disconnected the display, it turned into an Android-based 18 and a half inch tablet. Now we're seeing what I personally find to be a more refined version of that concept in a very, very usable form factor. So check this out. This is the Transformer Book Trio, which ASUS is calling the world's first three-in-one notebook, tablet, and desktop PC. So you can use it three different ways. Right here, they've got it demoed attached to a keyboard. So it is a multi-touch Windows notebook uh, running an Intel Core i7, up to a Core i7, fourth generation Haswell processor. You can have up to a one terabyte hybrid drive inside. So that gives you that performance that you need from an SSD, but with that mass storage that you like from a hard drive. Okay, then, okay, usage case number two. You detach it from the base 
and all of a sudden you've got yourself an Android tablet. Now this is running an Intel Atom processor. You can have up to 64 gigs of flash-based storage on it, and you can see right here, if I pull out my, uh, my usual phone thickness comparison, we can't get these things out of the case, but that's okay, we can make do with what we have. It is a very reasonable sized tablet in spite of having all that extra connectivity that goes into making it compatible with the base station. Now let's move on to use case number three. You can actually use it standalone without the dock, without the Android operating system as a Windows-based PC. So we've got an ASUS monitor here. This is from their MX series. This is the MX279H. We've actually checked this out. This features their Bang & Olufsen speaker technology. So this gives you the ability to use it as a dock without basically plugging anything into it at all. So there's a single cable running between the base station here and the ASUS monitor. Although, of course, if you wanted to use a mouse or something like that, you'd have to hook that up separately. So very, very cool product, giving you the flexibility to use either a Windows or Android operating system and anything from a notebook to a tablet to a sitting at a desk type of usage scenario. By now you're probably pretty familiar with ASUS's ZenBook line of Ultrabooks, but this one is a little bit new. Now I whine and gripe and complain incessantly about metal finishes on the backs of tablets, on the tops of notebooks, because the problem with them is that they always get all stained and fingerprinty and ugly. Check this out right here. This has the same kind of circular design. Hopefully you can get a couple different angles there and you can check it out as we've seen on some previous ASUS products such as the TF700. But the key difference here is that ASUS has Corning Gorilla Glass 3 on not only the touch surface of the notebook but also on the back of it. So what they're calling it as, a, as their tagline is clearly brilliant the notebook that never loses its shine. So it will look like that from the day you get it to the day you no longer need it anymore for whatever reason. And all you'll have to do to keep it clean and looking beautiful is give it a wipe down. So we can't get it out of the case, unfortunately, but just for the sake of size comparison, if we can get kind of a look at it, it's a pretty familiar form factor from what we've seen from ASUS in their ZenBook line. It also features Intel's new fourth generation Haswell Core i7 processor, meaning you're going to get better battery life, better performance, and with Gorilla Glass 3, better durability. So it's much more scratch resistant than Gorilla Glass 2. In fact, there have been complaints out there that, oh, Gorilla Glass 3 doesn't improve much over Gorilla Glass 2 from guys that are more interested in phones because it can tend to be a little bit more breakable but it is much more scratch resistant which personally I don't drop my notebook that often so I'm more worried about it getting scuffed up and dinged up when I'm putting it in and out of a bag. Very cool stuff. Now right now behind us there has to be the most obnoxious stage display that I've ever seen before in my life but fortunately this product isn't so much about the audio experience and is more about the visual experience. This is the PQ321. ASUS has already teased this, so there's a little bit of information that's been available already, but it is a 4K display. That means it runs at four times HD, 3840 by 2160. So effectively, this is four 1080p displays stretched out. Now there are some technical complications with 4K that do make it inherently more expensive in addition to just the increased pixel density because this is only a 31 and a half inch display compared to, I mean obviously it's a lot easier to put, you know, in a 24 inch display only 1920 by 1080 pixels. So there's that. There's the increased amount of image processing that needs to go on and remember if you're going to market a display for consumers and intend for people to watch movies and play games on it, it's going to have to have fast enough pixel response time, meaning faster processing, in order to make sure that you don't get any motion blur or ghosting or input lag that's going to take away from the experience. One of the other challenges is inputs. It supports a dual HDMI input, which means you're actually using two HDMI ports in tandem but there are some technological limitations there. The display interfaces haven't really all caught up. So the alternative is to use DisplayPort, which means you're gonna be able to run at the full 60 hertz refresh rate of this display without any sort of funky monkey business. It's using a sharp IGZO panel, which means that if you've ever seen one of those, you should have some idea what to expect in terms of viewing angles as well as color reproduction. But we might as well play around with it a little bit here 
here so we can show you guys. It does have pivot. It has height adjust. So yeah, whatever. It's it's sort of secured. So I'm sure they won't mind if we move things around too much. Oh. Okay, I see it has height adjust, but apparently I can't move it right now for whatever reason. You can actually see all the display inputs here on the side if you want to check it out. So ASUS generally recommends using display port in, not the dual HDMI input. There's also an audio in and audio out pass-through. Check out all that cooling on the back of the display as well, so that should give you some idea what I was talking about before with the increased, uh, with the increased processing that's going on here. I don't think we're going to get pivot out of this one. So it is a bit on the heavy side because that tends to happen when you get these large format displays. And personally, I am incredibly excited about, more than anything else, the gaming experience that this is going to enable on the desktop PC. There was a thread on the Linus Tech Tips forum not that long ago about how no game support 4K. Yeah, no console games. Pretty much any PC game going back to, like, you know, Quake 3. You can manually key in a 4K resolution. You can run that at extremely high res, ultra high def 4K. So thank you for checking out our coverage of the ASUS monitors and notebooks and tablets. Don't miss any of our show coverage from Computex 2013. And as always, don't forget to subscribe to Linus Tech Tips.